Is this gonna be my influencer apology video? I need to like let everyone down. Like I'm really sorry. Like. Just kidding. I feel like. <clears throat> I feel like an idiot because I feel like I don't know like fully what to say. There's just a lot to think about. Um, I will not lie and I'll say that like honestly this subject has been weighing on me pretty heavy recently and I think that there are multiple reasons for that. I think that, you know, for me, in the beginning, after everything had happened, obviously, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna assume that you don't know what I'm talking about because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be in the title. You already know what I'm talking about and I, you don't have any details yet and you're probably like, what the fuck? So like, be patient, just like give me a sec. Um, I feel like right after everything had happened, for a period of time, well, one, there were a lot of good things happening in my career, which also explains my leave of absence from YouTube for, I mean, what, it's been like months, it's been like five months or so, it's been like crazy, like, I like disappeared. Um, my career just like, started booming, like, like, oh, like, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy and I'm very proud and I'm, I feel very successful and I feel good. Um, but a lot happened all at once. And at the time, right after too, I had anger that I was just kind of harboring. And that anger has now gone away and now I feel like I'm really starting, not like now, I mean like kind of, the past, the past like month, I feel like I've been really, really dealing with like these like heavy, heavy like breakup feelings and I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what to like say. Um. I think, I think what makes it more hard is like obviously the comments and people say like never to read your comments, but like I do sometimes and there have been a lot of comments. There have been a lot of comments, even, even like before we broke up, we weren't really like taking pictures together or like doing anything together. So people were like, are you guys like broken up? And people were always commenting and I was like, ugh, you know, super annoying. And then we did break up and still, like, we weren't taking pictures, we weren't hanging out, and people, were, like, ever since then, like, people have been like, have you guys been broken up? And I, like, announced it. I announced it on Twitter, I talked about it, like, on Instagram Live, and I was hoping that that would be enough so I wouldn't have to talk about it again, but <laughs> I was wrong. Here I am again, talking about it again. Let's just, um... Let's talk about it. Let's get it done and over with because I so want it to be done and over with. And I feel like hopefully making this will um, f set me free of some of my feelings and will hopefully definitely set me free from so, 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 so many messages. So uh, I guess I'll just like, I guess I'll just start from the beginning and I'll kind of go from there. Um, and I'll like, I'll briefly, briefly like tell you everything at the beginning of the relationship and then I'll like kind of break it down for the end. You know what I'm saying? So we met on OkCupid and um, at the time like they were like very sweet to me and very flirty and complimentary and at the time that was the only like I don't know like person that was like actually interested and like wanting to like like actually interested in me period but like interested in like wanting to like meet and 
I think what had happened was, as we matched, and then they had messaged me, and I was super feeling them, and they were super feeling me, and literally the next day we had our first date. So, uh, so we had our first date, you know, it was great, it was whatever. And yeah, I think like we were both like very quickly infatuated with each other. I had went back to their house. I wasn't a hoe. I could have been though, but I wasn't. I went back to their house and we watched movies and we kissed, which was like wild to me that like someone wanted to kiss. Um, and we like fell asleep and that was that. And I woke up the next morning and I left and I went to rehearsals. But um, I remember actually calling my, like my sister and telling her like, I don't mean to be like, obviously like I'm joking, ha ha ha, but like this is the person that I'm gonna marry. <laughs> um, we'd ended up spending like, I think that whole weekend together. We had our first date on a Friday, woke up on Saturday, left to go to rehearsals all day long, had another date on Sunday, spent the night again, spent like all Monday together. <laughs> So we were very quickly all up in it. And that wasn't the plan. I wasn't like, at this point, like, I wasn't like looking. I wasn't like, you know, trying to like fall in love. But um, things happened very fastly. I mean, on the first date, not on the first date, on the second date. On our second date, we like went driving. We smoked a little bit. I remember I like sang a song and they literally broke out into tears. So I was, so it, it was very intimate and very emotional from the beginning. I met their family like that week, like on Wednesday, cause it was like their little sister's um, birthday party and they invited me. So I literally met their family the first week of knowing them. It was, um, It was all very fast. And... It didn't seem irresponsible. And it was a little irresponsible, but I don't think it was. Like, there have been other relationships that I've been in the past where, like, I was like, oh my god, like, I'm in love. Like, I'm in love, and it's already... And it, like, wasn't smart. But I don't think that was necessarily this situation. I don't think that I was crazy like that. But, um... But it did happen very fast. We fell in love very quickly with each other. And we were, um, Oh my god, okay. We were like good for each other, like our our political views aligned and they taught me a lot that I know now. Um same with sense of humor and like I really liked their music and they really liked my music and like this is the first person that I dated that like everything was good, you know? And this was the first person that like like fully respected me and like treated me like a woman and nothing less. I think we were probably six months in maybe eight months into our relationship, we had discussed, jokingly, but we had discussed getting married. Lo and behold, we proposed. 
you know, and it was beautiful. My, my best friend, her band was playing at some show and it was like full of people and they proposed to me. They had like curated something together and like they proposed to me in the middle of the song and it, it was really, really beautiful. And I felt like, I felt really, really loved. So, pretty soon after that, we went and had a little courthouse marriage, you know, with our, with our family there. My parents weren't there, but my grandparents were, and their parents were, and, like, my best friends were there, and my sisters were there. Um, we were like, okay, well, we should probably live together if we're, like, married now. Um... And their family was kind enough to let me live with them. Things were already rough at my house. And my relationship with my mom was very not healthy for both of us. Both my mother and I. So I thought it would be best that I just did leave. So, you know, I lived with them. And we were working. Pretty soon coming up. This goes back to the, s the first YouTube video that we came out with where it's like, I went and I had my chest done and I had quit my job at my mom's store because I'd been working there for years and I was ready to move on and I was ready to do bigger things. I, I had worked a couple jobs, but in between that, um, I quit at my mom's and r right after that happened, I think either just before or just after I'd gotten my chest done, they got let off. And so we were like, oh, like maybe it's like a blessing, like, you know, you can help me heal. For me at that time, I did not have the capacity to be able to do that, to be able to to run down my fucking shoes so I can go. Like I, I mentally, I was not okay enough to do that because I had already applied to a lot of jobs. We really did apply to so many jobs. We tried to do everything. And it just, it hadn't worked out for us. So lo and behold, we started to make videos together and that whole shablam happened and then that blew up and you know, it was, it was great. We were, we got kicked out <laughs> and we were homeless for a minute. We were couch surfing. Thank God I was lucky enough to have my sister who let me stay at her house for what, like, I think it was like two months. And we were trying to get like our channel up. Like we were working with her mom. We were working with her mom. So like, I don't know. We were trying everything. Um, we were finally able to like sustain ourselves and like get our own place. And we got our own apartment. And it was great and you know things were booming but once we got into the apartment things had like changed things were like a lot more serious and i don't know things things were no longer like happy like they used to be, which is like, duh, of course, they're not always gonna be like that when you're in a honeymoon phase, but, but things were different for sure. And um, work started to slow down, not because we were getting less views. In fact, it was quite the opposite. We were really starting to blow up, but work started to slow down because we were both unmotivated, but and they know this, like, this is not me, obviously. I did not come on this video to shit talk or to slander or to do any of that. Like, this is all just what happened. And maybe, yes, it is biased from my opinion, but I'm not shit talking anyone. I'm not being a bully. I'm not like making anything up. Like, I'm not trying to put anyone in a bad light. I'm just trying to explain the situation so I could be done talking about this because like, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> um, 
but they know this, like, I was starting to pick up a lot of the workload, like, the majority of the workload, and, and I would ask for help, and I'd say, you know, like, I'm doing all this, I'm, I'm, I'm filming, I'm editing, I'm marketing, I'm doing all the stuff, so you need to help, and, and, and they did, and they, and they would, but it became, like, a cycle where they would slowly just, like, stop fulfilling their responsibilities so I would just pick them up again and then I would feel frustrated because then all of a sudden I'm overwhelmed because they're sitting on the couch all day long and I'm trying to get us to make videos together and when I do I'm the one who's setting setting everything up I'm the one who's filming it I'm the one who's editing it I'm the one who's uploading it I'm the one you know it's like it became a lot of pressure on me the type of content that we make is niche you know, so we were aware that I, like, it was going to be centered around me, but it was no longer just centered around me. It was me doing everything. So it started to get a little rough and tough. And I could also tell that, like, their mental health was starting to deplete and it was starting to, um, really, like, s begin to affect them. I, like, started to see that. We moved again, we moved closer out to Los Angeles so it could be easier for me to work. And because um, my sister, my best friend, my roommate um, worked out here, so we thought it would be, you know, smart to live out here. We could all live together. It would be really fun, it would be really cool. Once we moved into this apartment, the videos virtually stopped. Like, we just stopped filming. I personally, like myself, I started to like blow up a little bit and people started to recognize me more. We went to the T Awards and I, and I won for fan choice. So like, things were starting to look really look up for me. When it started to become like, more booming, I don't think that that affected them. I don't think that that like had any toll on like their self-esteem. Like they were like, oh, well, I'm ugly. And like, they only care, like, that's not what it was about, but their mental health was starting to affect them and we stopped making videos altogether at that point, like, still, like, we had stopped because, like, it was me doing everything, again, and it was still, like, the same ebb and flow of, like, can you please help, and then they would, and then all of a sudden they wouldn't, so, like, it was me doing everything all by myself again, and we just stopped because, like, I was not, I was not motivated anymore, like, I was not interested it wasn't fun to set up and film with them anymore. Like we would argue every single time that we filmed. Like it was not, it was not ideal. I had been for a long, not for a long time, but I had discussed with them like, okay, so, mm -hmm. I don't know obviously the possibilities of this happening, but would you, there were some other, There were some other trans girls that, like, I was a huge fan of and that I very much looked up to who had, like, commented on my stuff and, like, messaged me and said, like, oh, like, I'd love to work with you, da 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 And I was like, oh my god, like, that's, that's, that's a huge opportunity that I can't miss. And so we had had multiple discussions of, like, well, you know, would you be okay with me working with this girl? Like, what are the boundaries? Like, I know that, like, it's us, but... It is work, so it's different, and it would be a huge opportunity for me, and they were okay with that. We talked about it for a long time. I think before I had actually worked with another person besides them, we had talked about it for like six months before. Like, we talked about it for a long time. But they were going through it in their head, and we could all tell, but we like couldn't quite get to the root of the problem. And at that point, there had been some now obviously recognized and apologized for displacement, but there was some definite displacement being put onto us where, you know, there were jokes that we would make that they wouldn't get that it was a joke. And so they would like blow up on us. And that was like a constant thing. Or they were just, they were like a rain cloud at that point and they were no longer happy and we could all see it. 
and it was all negatively affecting us. And at this point too, I was, I was questioning like, not even just with them, like, oh, you know, are they okay? What's going on with them? But I was questioning like, is this what, like, is this what I really want? You know, like, I, I really do, did love this person and, but like, this is not what I signed up for. And, you know, we had had, like, bad phases before that we, like, worked through. But this wasn't, like, a phase. Like, this was, like, I could feel, I, I could feel that this was the end for some reason. And I didn't want, I, like, didn't want to accept that. But I could, like, slowly start to feel like this is no longer going to be. The first time that I had shot with someone else was in June. And I, that didn't cause any issues. I went and I shot and it was fine. At that point, like we really weren't even in a relationship. I mean, we, nothing had happened. We, had, we hadn't said anything, but we weren't really in a relationship anymore. We were just kind of like coexisting, you know? We were just around each other and we lived together, but we weren't, we didn't love each other anymore. Or we weren't in love with each other anymore. My friends were really good about, like, not being like, oh, like, you need to do that, like, you know, like, putting bugs in my ears. Like, my friends never did that. They let me... They let me figure all of this out on my own, and they let me um, work through it, which I really, really appreciate. So, I shot with my first person in June, and then we had shot together for a movie... And that day, that day that we shot together in late June uh, was the day that I knew that it was over. We had gotten into a fight. We, we had fought all the way there and all the way back home. Two hours there, two hours back. Um, yeah, so we argued. Then, you know, we got in, we went and we shot. We did not talk to each other. Like, we sat alone in a room. Like, they were shooting another scene somewhere else. And so we literally sat in a room, like, 10 feet sitting from each other, not talking on our phones for, like, 30 minutes. And I kept, like, and I texted them. And I was like, I want to, like, talk about this. Like, this is really dumb. We don't need to be arguing about this. And they were like, well, I don't really want to. And I was like, you're fucking childish. And you know, then they got over it and we like half apologized, but it wasn't like a full apology and I was still really pissed off at them. And then we shot and then we left. I don't even remember what we argued about on the way home. Like it was just in general in our relationships, when we would start to argue, like they would not let me speak and they would talk over me. And like, wouldn't ever let me finish a fucking point. And so I remember, and that's the only thing that I really remember about the second fight, because we thought about something else. But I remember being like, I remember like it got to a point where like I was trying to say something and I was like, you literally asked me a fucking question and you're sitting here talking over me, not letting me answer it. You don't care what I have to say. You don't respect me. You don't love me. It was like, it was very intense, okay? Like, it got very intense. And it wasn't at that tone. We were, like, screaming at the top of our lungs. I was like, you literally asked me a fucking question. And I'm trying to sit here and answer it. And you won't even let me speak. You never let me fucking speak. Like, how am I supposed to not feel like a crazy person when you're constantly talking over me? Oh, my God. It was absolutely insane. And, like, I, I was very, very pissed off. And I, I was, like, punching the steering wheel. And they were, like, they broke. Thank God I got a new car. So... They were angry and they literally broke the fucking um, glove compartment because they were kicking it, kicking the glove compartment and screaming at me and punching the window. And um, they hopped in the back seat and we just didn't talk. And I cried the rest of the way home. I just cried. And like my head, in my head that I, I remember it, like in my head that whole car ride, I was like, you should just call your mom. Like you should just call your mom because you're staying there tonight. Like you're not staying, like you should just call your mom because like we're done. Like you should call your mom because we are over. 
we got home, we like didn't talk. And then they went and like laid down in here and I was beyond pissed and I was not gonna stay home with them. So I told my roommates, I was like, hey, like, I'm going out right now. I don't know if you are, but I'm going out right now and I'm gonna go get, I'm gonna go get some drinks because I deserve some fucking drinks. So, <clears throat> you're with me or you're without me. You know what I'm saying? All throughout that last year, up until what, July? I had still asked, you need to get a therapist. You need to get a therapist. You need to get help. In the last couple months, when they weren't doing anything, I was like, you need to get a job. Like, you need to get a job. You're literally not doing anything. Like, you need to get a job. And they were like, well, what am I gonna do? And I was like, I don't fucking know. Like, you know that, like, you can work with my family. You, like, you have opportunities. You, you just don't want to take them. And I came in here before I went out. And I had sat down and I was like, I need you to know that I love you. But, like, it is getting really hard for me to stay in this with you. Because... It is so clear and blatant that you do not respect what I have to say or what I think or literally anything. I said, you need to get a fucking job because I have been supporting your ass for a long time now. And you need to get a therapist. Like, have you looked for a therapist? And they were like, no. And I said, I've been asking you to get a therapist for how many fucking months? It's been, it's been eight months. It's been, it's, it's almost been a year that I've been asked you to get a therapist and you haven't even looked for a therapist. I was, I was very, very pissed off. Like I screamed at them about that and then they sat and they cried in bed and I went out and I got drinks and I told my roommate, I was like, hey man, like we had this whole fight. We did this whole thing. It was not the biz. Like I'm not feeling this, feeling this anymore. And she was like, you know what, Char, like I'm gonna be super real with you. Both me and the other one feel, my other roommate, um, have been watching this for a minute and like, we, we've talked about it. Like we weren't going to tell you anything because like, it's not our responsibility if you you guys are able to work things out, but we could tell that like, this is not what it is anymore. And like, that's not the person that you want to be with anymore. Cause that's not, that's not who we all fell in love with. Like we all fell in love with them because they're great. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, I feel like not no longer am i just not happy but like at this point i am miserable like i'm sad every single day i wake up i wasn't happy anymore a couple of days went by and i was like you know that like it's literally my fear but like <sighs> i think they were like doing dishes or something and i just like i didn't know how to say it like i don't know I didn't know how to be like, oh, like, I don't love you anymore. <laughs> like, because I did. I, like, still did. It's just that I was, we were not happy. I literally just, like, started, like, bawling. Like, I just started crying. Like, I went up and I, like, hugged them and I just started crying. They were like, what's wrong? And I was like, we need to talk. And so we, like, sat down and I was like, I love you more than anything in this whole world. I don't think that I have loved anyone or that I will, oh no, no, I'm getting starting to get sad. Um, or now that I will ever love anyone as much as I love you, but I cannot be with you anymore because you are not the person that I fell in love with. And you've made it hard for me to want to be with you because sometimes you're really, really mean You don't let me speak. You don't listen to what I have to say. And you're not trying to help yourself. And if you're not trying to help yourself, then why should I try and help you? And I said, you know, I love you, but it's time for you to go. And I said, you, you need to leave. Yeah, that was, that was, that was that. And, um, That was the end of it, really. You know, we're not on bad terms. I don't think that... I don't think I'm ever going to be able to be friends with that person. Just because...
Just because I did love them so much. I know I know you're probably like, bitch, why aren't you crying? Like, I only watched this so, so I could like see you break down in tears. No, bitch. One, I'm masking my emotions, but two, it's been a while. Like, what is it? It's now November. We broke up in July. I announced it in like September. So I've had a minute to process it. It's just very sad. And not at all the way that I wanted things to go, but it has, it has propelled me into being a lot better for me. And since then, everything in my life has been um, great and thriving. And I'm not better off without them, but I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't have stayed in that situation because it was no longer a healthy situation at the end. It became very, very dark and um, rather toxic at the end for both of us. I'm, I'm doing okay. Like, I won't lie to you, like, as of, as of the last month, like, I've super been struggling with these feelings because, because it sucks. Like, I really, 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 like, I can't, like, words can't describe, like, I, like, I loved that person. And for like a while I was angry and now like I'm not and I haven't been. And so now I'm like really starting to have to deal with like the loss, which, which is really hard. <laughs> um, but there's no ill will. I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to be friends with that person because there were, was so much emotional attachment for me, but there's no ill will, there's no, you know, badness between us. I hope the best for them. It just sucks. So. So yeah, like, that's pretty much it. Um, now that everything's finally slowed down, let's, let's end this off on a positive. Now that things have finally slowed down, I'm going to be able, I'm not going to be able, but I'm finally going to be doing like YouTube again. Um, my life has been good and plentiful and I've been very lucky and I'm grateful for all the amazing people that watch and that are sweet and that um, genuinely care about if I'm okay. So you have no idea how much I appreciate that. And you have no idea how much like sometimes I really, really need that. Cause I'm also not a person and I wish I should be. But I'm not a person who really reaches out when I need help or when I'm feeling down. It makes me uncomfortable. I know that's dumb. I know it shouldn't. It just, it does. It makes me... I constantly, constantly feel like a burden. Like, 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 inten like I intensely feel like a burden. And... I don't want to waste anyone's time, so I'm never going to call anyone if I'm sad. I mean, like, I don't even, I don't even really even, like, call friends to hang out. Like, I don't want to, I gen, like, I really, like, do not want to waste people's time. And I know it's unhealthy, and I know it's probably not right, but, like, in my head, my assumption is that, like, people don't, like, people don't want to hang out with me. Not, not because I'm a bad person, but, like, people have busy lives. And, like, why would you just assume that people want to hang out with you? Like, don't be, like, don't be a narcissist. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that other people assuming that are narcissistic. But I'm saying, like, for me, like, I feel narcissistic when I think, like, oh, yeah, they probably want to hang out with me. So, like, if they want to hang out with me, I should probably reach out because, you know, we might have a good time together. That's not how my mind works. Like, even still, with all of, all those very positive things that I genuinely do feel about myself, I still feel like a huge just fucking, like, burden. So... 
I'm working on that. And that's not a good way to feel about yourself. It really, really affects me sometimes. A lot of the times, it, um, it's just not good. So, so yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on myself. I'm finally going to be able to work on my YouTube channel more once again. And, um, and I'm going to go now because I'm kind of sad, but also I have somewhere to be. So I love you all. Thank you for watching my shit. I know it's been a long time and I'm very, very sorry, but, but yeah, um, I don't know. Here's to new beginnings. Yeah, whatever. I don't know how to like sign off. Love you all. Have a good be good to yourselves. I don't know. Like, learn from your toxic behaviors and be better. Bye.